Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started in our Bible study for tonight. I want to take and um, continue on in our study and our consideration of the Isle of F Discourse. Again, it was Jesus' last Republic Discourse, and we're working our way through it to get an understanding, as the Bible says, in all your gettings, let us get an understanding. So I want to invite you your attention to the gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter number 24 and we want to start our reading at verse number 29. So the gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter number 24 starting at verse number 29. The gospel as recorded by Matthew, chapter number 24, starting at verse 29. And then again, we want to take this opportunity to welcome those that are joining us through way of, of Zoom and Facebook Live and later through uh, Twitter and YouTube and other social media platforms. Again, we're, we're blessed and we're humbled by the number of people that we have to view our Bible study. So we're in uh, Matthew chapter number 24, starting at verse number 29. In the King James Version of the Scriptures, you shall find these words. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And then we want to continue on. We did on part one on last week, the appearing of the Son of Man. And this week we want to look at um, part number two and finish up this portion of scripture as time would allow. Again, our lesson is entitled The Appearing of the Son of Man, part number two. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we want to continue, God, to thank you, God, for what you are in our lives on today. Father God, as we come to you, God, with open Bibles, allow us, O oh God, to have open minds and also, God, open hearts. And God, we ask, O oh God, we're so open and while we're so exposed that you would please take this opportunity to search your word into our hearts, into our mind, that we would know see, understand, and do what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, and we all want to say amen. 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 As we look at, as we look at this text, kind of we look at just part of the background, kind of looked at this gust on last week and saw how we saw that how immediately after the tribulation, after these things, after we talk about all of the Holocaust, we talked about all of the, the, the Antichrist, we talked about after all these things, the Bible says immediately after these things, after the tribulation, then look at it, it says, then the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. Then notice what happens immediately after that. Then we see the sign of the Son of Man. Then we see Jesus actually appearing, actually coming. And so notice, notice what God has done. First of all, we see a time of darkness. Then we see a time of lightness. I know that's not a word, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And so, and so uh, 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 it's curious to me 
that when you when you go into a, a jewelry store and you go to buy a diamond or a pair of earrings or a bracelet or a necklace, what, what the person behind the counter will many times do, they will pull it out from, from underneath the, the, the cabin. They will pull it out and they will, they will stretch out a black cloth. They will put the diamond on top of the black cloth. Why? Because the darkness of the black cloth brings out the brilliance of the diamond. Are you seeing that? So just like how God has set this thing up, that how, first of all, we go through a period of darkness, the earth goes through a period of darkness, then Jesus shows up. Then, 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 then Jesus shows up. Our outline for night did, first of all, we'll look at the scene in heaven. Second, the strength of his glory. And then thirdly, the selecting by the angels. So first of all, so, so we, 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 we have discussed, we have discussed, in length about the tribulation, about how the seven-year tribulation, about how the Antichrist is going to come on the scene, he's going to establish, and we looked at, we even saw, let me back up for just a moment, we, we saw that in Daniel, we're not going to take time to turn tonight, but we saw in Daniel what, what, what God gave Nebuchadnezzar a dream of this image, of this statue of the head of gold with the arms of, of silver, with, with the brass and the thighs, with the, 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 the mid punch and, and the thighs of brass, and then the, the legs of iron down by the feet, iron also mixed with clay with ten toes. And so I realized that when the Antichrist comes on the scene, those ten toes represent what? A ten world government. And I understand this, that this is coming. I'm told that when President um, Clinton was in office, that he had this plan where this 10 world government would come into fruition. I'm not saying that, that, that the devil used Mr. Clinton, but I'm just saying that, that he had this, that, that he had this, 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 he came with this, this vision or this, this, this thing. And so, and so, but we see, but we, many times in a day we hear about what a Euro dollar. And, and so we hear, and so, so what's going to happen? And so one of those 10 world government, it's going to be 10 government that they rule the world. Out of those, one of those are going to be the Antichrist. What's going to happen? The Antichrist is going to come. He's going to get two more of those toes or those government to fall in line with him. And then he's going to use that momentum to take control of the whole thing. And then after that, then he's going to establish this covenant with Israel, how he's going to bring back the animal sacrifice, how he's going to bring back, you know, that the, the, the temple, how he's going to allow them to do all these things. So, so for Israel, the first Three and a half years of the tribulation is really not a bad deal. That they're going to get to do what they've been aching to do for years. But how many know that? That I think it was my Angelo said it. That when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And so, so how the devil was going to show his true colors in the midst of of the tribulation? Then he's going to send himself into the holies of holies and present himself to be worshipped as God. And then that's when kind of it hits the fan, how things kind of turn topsy-turvy. So how we go through all of this anguish, all of this tribulation, all of this suffering, and which was depicted in the book of Revelation from chapter 4 all the way down through to chapter 19. And so we see all of this bold judgment, all these different types of holocaust that's going on. But the Bible says that immediately after that, Jesus is going to appear. But I said all this, say, guess what? When the church... The church gets raptured up before the tribulation starts. We have looked at that. We have studied that. We have proven that through scriptures. But, but, but as the church is raptured up, now the tribulation is going on down here on earth. So I want to take a moment to let, let us know at the church what we are going to be doing through that seven-year period. So, so we're going to look through scriptures. So what are we going to be doing through that seven-year period? Because the Bible says what? To be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. And so, so let's look at this scene in heaven. And I'm going to introduce you to something. Maybe you haven't heard this, this, this phrase before, but the marriage supper of the Lamb. Meaning this big wedding ceremony because what the church is what depicted as what? The bride of Christ. And so we're going to get to that in, in a moment. So, But now let's turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter number 19, and let's look at verses um, 7 through 9 to start with. Revelation chapter 19, and starting at verse 7. 
Revelations um, chapter number 19 at verse 7. And so if you're there, say amen or give me a wave. And so and so it so it says in the King James Version of the Scripture it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. And verse 8 says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and white for the for, for the fine linen is what the righteousness of the saints and verse 9 says and and he said unto me right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb for he said unto me these things are the true saying of god and so we see, and so we see this marriage supper of the Lamb. And so, so when the church is, is raptured up, when the church is raptured up, so we're going to be dressed in our fine linen. Notice what it says, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Watch this now. Remember, our righteousness is what? Imputed. So when you and I get saved, we have his righteousness imputed or deposited into our, into our account. And so, so because this righteousness is imputed, so guess what? So it's really not our righteousness because, you know, the Bible says that the righteousness that I do, what are filthy rags, me, me, meaning that if he want, once a rag is soiled, many times it points to what, what the, 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 the rag or the cloth that the ladies would use when it was that time of the month. So once that rag was soiled, it was not good to be used for anything. So what God is saying, see, the righteousness that I think that I do it is filthy rags, meaning they can't, can't use that for anything because it's soiled, it's stained. And so, so I always remember that my righteousness, the righteousness that God is talking about, that has been imputed, that has been deposited into my account based on my relationship with Christ. And so, 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 no, so we come into this wedding, and so, 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 notice, so, it says, so we were granted that them that they should be arrayed in fine linen and, and, and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And no, no, notice what it says in verse 9, it says, and, and he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Watch this now. And so the church, what is the bride? So guess what? A bride never has to be called or invited to her own wedding. Does that make sense to anybody? So who are these people that are called to this wedding? Or, or in our vernacular, who are these people that are guests at the wedding, that are invited at the wedding? Meaning I would submit to you that these people are the Old Testament saints. We talk about Abraham and, and, and Isaac and all them. Why? Because, because a bride, you know, it does not have to be invited to her own wedding. So, so the wedding is there, but, 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 but we see the Old Testament saints are invited to this wedding. So we're about to have two groups at this wedding. We have the bride of Christ, and we also have the guests, meaning the Old Testament saints. And so, but this, this wedding is going to go on, what, for, for like, for seven years. And so in, in the Jewish economy, you know, many times the, 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 the father would, uh, would pay for the wedding. And many times, depending on how much money the father had, was how long the wedding would last. See, sometimes, typically, a wedding would last what, up to a week. But if the father really was wrong like that, if he really had some money, or if he really had his 401k together, <laughs> so, so, the, so the marriage might last for a month. But guess what? This wedding is going to last for seven years. Because why? Because your father owns a cattle on a, on, 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 on a thousand hills. Mean that, that God's resources is unlimited. And this is why you and I need to learn how to trust in him. But we see, but we see how this wedding is going to last. Now, look, now drop down a few verses. Let's pick it up at verse number 11. And he says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True, 
and in righteousness doeth he doeth he make war. His eyes were a flame of fire, and his feet were, uh, were, were as many crowns, and his head were as many crowns, and, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Verse 13 goes on to say, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Do you see all these titles of like God wants you to know who he's talking about? And verse 14 says, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Did that sound familiar? We just looked at that we were all dressed as the church, as the bride of Christ, dressed in white linen. And verse 15 says, And out of out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. We, we, remember our last study, we talked about the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword? It is the word of God. So a sharp sword within, and he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread upon the wine presses of fierce wrath of the almighty God. And so here, and so we see that, so we see this wedding that's going to go on for seven years. And we see the Old Testament saints are invited unto this wedding. And now we're all going to be dressed in fine linen and white. But, but we're going to follow Jesus as he comes. The Bible depicts on a white horse. As he comes, we're coming riding these horses as this army of saints are behind the Lord Jesus Christ. But guess what? He does all the fighting. He, 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 he issues out his word. His sword will come from his mouth. And the Bible said that he will smite the nations. And so remember we looked at a couple weeks ago how people were under the altar. The saints of God were under the altar. When are you going to redeem us? When are you going to, 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 to justify? When are you going to make the right right? So he comes and we're coming with him. But I love this. Why? Because first of all, we're dressed in white. And no army fights in white, so we don't have to do the fighting. But we let. But but the but, but remember the old song says, "Hold my peace, and let the Lord fight my battles." See, sometimes we don't realize what the saints of old were saying in them old songs because there was a lot of Bible in them old songs. And so not many times like the day where we look for a beat or, or a rhythm, but, but they say, hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle because this is what's going to happen. This is a day that's coming that, that we're going to come with God. We're going to come with him and he's going to make war with the nation. Now, let's put all of this together. Now, turn with me. To the gospel, as recorded by John, a very familiar portion of scripture, John 14, let's look at verses um, 1 through 3, John 14, verses 1 through 3, the gospel of John, chapter number 14, verses 1 through 3, and it says, let not your heart be troubled. <clears throat> Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. See, 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 this is a picture of, of a, of what I call a Jewish wedding and what some theologians call a Near Eastern wedding where, 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 where they would have a, a, a contract period where many times the, 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 the parents of the bride would come together and they would iron out a contract when their children were going to be married. Many times the children didn't have anything to do with it, but the parents would come and iron out a contract. Then it would go into what is called the, the betrothal period. Then it would come a time when the groom or when the respected groom would go away, he would prepare a place for his bride. Many times in that in that society, he would build a wing or, or extra room unto his parents' house, or sometimes he would go away. He would stab himself in a trade, and so so. But but the, but the point is that the bride never knew when the groom was coming back, so what she had to be ready. 
she had to be ready. So, but her job was was while the groom was going away, build and preparing a place for her. But but her job was to be ready for him to come. So many times she would get together with her mother and, and, and her perspective, a mother-in-law, and she would learn how to be a good Jewish wife. She would learn how to do the things that a good Jewish wife was supposed to do it's because why well, she had to be ready. And so notice what Jesus says in my father's house. A many men mean that he's going to build a house. So watch me now. I know the King James, and we like King James. We like the, thing, the whole thing about mansions. And so, and so, but some translations said dwelling places. And so watch me now. See, we, we, we think about this whole thing about God having this mansion. We all have our mansions with the, with the picket fence and, and all the land and, and we're all separated. And so we, we got all these rooms. And so, but that, that's not really what God is concerned with. So maybe, you know, I, I just believe this is me. And so, you know, this is not really Bible, but we're going to be, it's going to be some, condominium living and so it's going to be some apartment living why because see god does not want us on this big mansion all separated from one another he wants us to be able to fellowship with one another but we still have our own dwelling places but it's not this big separate thing with, with the acres and acres of land out on the moat and, 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 and water surround us so nobody can get to us but it's for us to be fellowshipping together but he says in my father's house are many mansions or many dwelling places no he says if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself what he's talking about what the rapture when he comes so that's why us at the church we have to be ready so when he comes but then we see when he comes and the rapture happens we're ushered up into heaven we're drawn up into heaven and the bible's talking about that the dead in christ is going to rise first and so now we're going to go into this marriage supper of the land for the seven year celebration for the seven year Thing for the seven year thing, and, and also the Old Testament saints are going to be invited onto the, the, this marriage supper of the Lamb. So we see, we see all of this stuff is going to be happening. Now, that's now, that's so we see this going on. So we see down here the seven year tribulation and God judging the earth. But while God is judging the earth, guess what? The bride of Christ is up in heaven celebrating this marriage supper of the Lamb. And so, again, this is why you and I want to be ready. This is why you and I, you know, if Jesus tarry, we want to be raptured up. But if he calls us home, so the Bible said, guess what? If we, if, if, if we go home, the rest with him, guess what? The Bible said what the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So guess what? Nobody's going to be left out if you name in the name of Jesus Christ, but please understand this, that, that we make it in, not by our good works, but what Christ has already done for us, because he's imputed those things unto our account, so now, guess what, when God looks at us, he sees the blood of Christ that was shed for us, for the remission of our sins, is anybody seeing that, and so now, let's shift gears, so now, let's look at the strength of his glory, the strength of his glory. So let's turn back to our, our main te text in Matthew uh, chapter number 24. Let's look at verse number 30, Matthew 24 and verse number 30. And it says, And then shall the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in, in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. So we see the strength of his glory. So notice what it says. So first of all, we see in his power, meaning that he will conquer all of his enemies. He will conquer all of his enemies because he's going to come in, in the power. So when we speak of in the power, so, so, so notice, so let's turn to Revelations um, chapter number 19, and let's look at verse number 20. Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 20. 19 and 20. Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 20, and it says, And the beasts was taken, and with the false prophets that wrought miracles before him, with which 
he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive in the lake of fire with burning brimstone. And so these things, and so, so, so we see, so we see God is going to conquest his enemies. So he's going to, so he's going to take the, 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 the false prophet, he's going to take the Antichrist and he's going to cast them. Look what it says. He's going to cast them, you know, into the lake of fire. He's going to cast them into the lake of fire. That's what, because hell is going to be put into the lake of fire. He's going to cast them into the lake of fire. But but note but but not, but not only them but all those that that were deceived all those that received the mark all those that were not truly redeemed are going to be cast into this lake of fire so God is going to get rid of all of His enemies He's going to take care of them once and, and for all and so so but we talked about this I believe it was last week but we're going to see but after this happened. We, the, the, we go into a period of time which is called the millennial kingdom, which is called the thousand year reign of Christ. And so again, there, there's no devil. Devil is locked up. The false prophets are locked up. His imps are locked up. But we're living under Christ's leadership because he's going to rule with the rod. Are we going to get to see how Jesus really intended this world to be reigned? He's going to run it for a thousand years. A thousand years we're going to be living in a perfect environment. And this is something I cannot get past. We're going to be living in a perfect environment. But the Bible says after that time. The devil is going to be released for a season. I don't know how long the season, but he's going to release for a season, the Bible says. But then guess what? When we release, he's going to be free to wreak a little bit of havoc. And guess what? Some people that live for a thousand years under Christ in a perfect, sinless environment, they're still going to choose to follow the devil. And, and, then, and then, he's going to, then he's going to cast all them into the lake of fire and and the Bible, as the King James says, and, and, and brimstone, you're gonna cast them all into this lake of fire and and, and brimstone. But, but 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 he's gonna conquer all of his enemies. Now let's turn to Daniel 9 and and 24. Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 24. Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 24. We've kind of looked at this briefly before, but it says. And the seventy week are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation for the iniquities and to bring an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy to the anointed most holy. Again, God is going to let this, this, this run out. And that's what he's doing now. He's going to let this run out, but he's going to really, going to really intensify things. He's going to let this evil run out. But when things are accomplished, that God is going to put a seal on it. And that God is going to put it into it. And again, we've already seen that God has already marked out. It's going to be a seven year period. But as we saw before that, at the end of this, at the end of the tribulation, then Jesus is going to appear in the sky. Then he's going to appear in the sky. And the Bible talks about that. Then in his power, he's going to conquer his enemies. And so, but, but no, but also he conquers the enemies. But watch it now. He's going to also bring harmony to his creation. Now, let, let's turn with me to, to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 11. And let's look at verses um, 6 through 9. The prophet Isaiah, chapter number 11. And let's look at um, verses. Let me lift up for you verses um, 6 through 9. Isaiah, which is called the, the Prince of the Prophets. And in verse 6, he says, And the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lions and, and the flatterings to together. And a little child shall lead them, and the crow and the bear shall feed, and their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the suckling child shall play in the hole with the asp. Another translation says with the cobra, meaning with the snake. And, and, and the weaning child shall put his hands in the cock trot, Den, meaning in the snake's den, and they shall not hurt nor be destroyed 
in all the holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the, the winter covers, that the water covers the sea. And so we see, and so again, we see, so now it's a natural tendency of these animals to fight one another. I was, I was, I was watching, a, I was watching a, a, a clip earlier today and, and I don't, I, I can't understand why in God's green earth, people want to, want to, want to play with snakes and, and pythons. So the lady had this python in this, in this thing. And so she lifted up the thing and the python kind of looked up. And so he kind of came out. He kind of grabbed around her arm. So he's grabbing around her arm. And then they, what they do, they squeeze it. They squeeze it. They squeeze it. So, 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 and they squeeze it. As the light comes, they squeeze tighter. So they squeeze. So he had to get this other guy. And they're trying to get this thing off. And they're trying to get this thing off. And so I'm looking at it. I said, You should have never open up the cage. You should never let him out because you know what he was going to do. That In this, this obsession, that is nature. But watch me now, but God is going to change nature. God is going to change how, how animals that try to feed on one another, that, 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 that they're going to be able to lie down and eat grass together. And so how the child is going to be able to put his hand in, 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 in the snake pit, gonna put his hand in the snake hole and not be bit because why God through his power, you know, th 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 in his power, he's gonna not only conquer his enemies, but guess what? He's gonna bring harmony to the world. And I don't know about you, but we live in a day when we need some harmony of God. But notice what it said that when we see God. See the, see, the Bible says something interesting. John, in one of his epistles, said when he saw the Lord, that he became like him. And so many times, see, many times, see, this is what our world needs. We need to see the Lord. And so but how are they going to see the Lord? They see the Lord through me and you because we have to get up that work and we show them how God does it. We show them how Jesus types a paper. We show them how Jesus answers a door. We show them how Jesus drives a car. Because why? Because we may be the only Bible that some people will ever Read and so now, so 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 we have to. So God wants to use us to bring this little bit of harmony. But guess what? But there's going to come a calm day when God is going to get tired of you and I fiddling around. He's going to say, "I'm going down and I'm going to handle this by myself. I'm going to put my enemies in their place. I'm going to bring harmony to. I'm, I'm going to cause." Animal natures that go against one another. And guess what? So that the lion and the lamb are going to be able to lay down together. See, now a, a lamb can't be nowhere near a lion because a lion is going to, going to, going to devour. But, but how the lion is no longer going to eat flesh, but they're going to eat vegetation. And so how they're going to, God is going to bring this harmony all into existence. So God is going to bring this harmony all into existence, but he's in his power. But, but look, let's look at but look, the second thing, you know, by his power, meaning that God is going to eliminate some things from this earth. And so turn with me to Zechariah. Uh, we got to take some time to find it because I know we, we're not used to finding Zechariah. So turn it with me to Zechariah. It's in the Old Testament in the prophet section of Zechariah chapter number 14. And let's look at verse number eight. So the prophet Zechariah, chapter number 14 and verse number 8, Zechariah 14 and 8, and it says, And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them towards the former sea, and half of them towards the hinder sea in summer and in winter, and shall it be. And, and, the, and the verse 9 says, And the Lord shall be king over the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. And so, but notice, but notice, but notice that the, so, so we see in that verse, watch now, we see that for he's going to eliminate drought because he said the water is going to travel from, from where it is, where it usually is 
to where it's not going to be where it usually isn't. So, 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 so we see drought. So he's going he, he to take, he's going to eliminate flood. He's going to eliminate crop failure. He's going to even eliminate starvation. And so God is going to do this thing. Guess what? You know, guess what? And by his power, he's going to eliminate drought, flood, crop failure, and, and, and starvation. God is going to make all these things right. Again, we're going to see the Bible talk about he's going to rule with a Ryan eye. And so we're going to get to see just how this earth was supposed to rain. And God's going to eliminate these things that you and I struggle with. He's going to eliminate these things. And so he's going to do these things what by his power. So we saw in his power, he's going to conquer his enemies. He's going to bring harmony. But by his power, he's going to eliminate drought, flood, crop failure and also starvation and so God is going to do these things you know by, by the strength guess what of his glory because when he does these things guess what that's more reason for us to give him glory that's more reason for us to praise him because because he's going to do these things because, because we're not going to no longer have to struggle where we're going to eat. We're going to have to struggle where we're going to live. We're not going to have to struggle about these things because God is going to eliminate talk, take all these obstacles out of our way so what? So we can praise and give him glory and give him honor and worship him in spirit and also in truth. And so now let, let's turn back to our, our, our main text and let's look at um, verse number 31. Verse number 31. Chapter number 24 of Matthew and verse number 31. And it says, and then, then he shall send his angels with a great trump. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. And so notice what it says. First of all, so after, all, after he showed his great power, guess what? God is going to set these things up. Then he's gonna send out his angel. And notice he said, with a sound of a trump. And so, so in, in the ancient world, many times they use the sound of a trump to signify something, to, to signal for you. To the, the many times we, we watch the old movies, how the trump would come and they would signify it was time for war. It was time to march. Many times they would signify that it was time, you know, to, um, to, to eat. So, so, so they would use the trump. So God is going to send out this trump, but it's going to be a signal that it's time for the angels to, to go with the great trump to, to, to go and to gather what? His elect, meaning that his chosen one, meaning the one that had been redeemed through this tribulation period. Because guess what? We don't have to be gathered because we're, we're already with him. So, so he's going to gather, guess what, the tribulation saints, the, the, his elect, his chosen one, his one that have made it through. And they're going to gather from the four winds. And so guess what? So, so, so I, 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 let me say it this way. I remember um, being, being in high school and, and playing basketball and, 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 some, and some of the guys, because, because see what the coach did is that he tried to get the seniors in the game because he was trying to get them stats so they can get money, a scholarship to go to college. So many times the seniors have preference off playing time because of what the coach was trying to do. Because if any coach, especially high school coach, is worth their salt, he's always trying to get his players scholarship for the next level. Is anybody seeing that? So, but, but I remember that people, what some of the guys were trying to sit next to the coach because they wanted to get in the game. And so they said, figure if I sat next to the coach, when he needs somebody in the game, he would just tap me on my knee. He would tell me to go in the game. But I noticed something. That the coach would pass that person that was sitting by them, and he would point to the one that he really wanted to go in the game. What am I saying to you? That God has no trouble finding you wherever you are. And so, so, so I don't have to try to get noticed by God. I don't have to try to get up to God. I just have to do what He had placed in my hand to do because God had no trouble finding me. Look, look at what it says. He's going to send out His angels. He's going to gather them. Even the Bible talks about us being raptured because that God's going to rapture us up. So God is going to know where we are. And so, watch me now. And so, so it does not matter. So, so, so there, there's some people that say that a Christian. 
should be buried. And so if that's your preference, that, that's your preference. But guess what? You know, I think the children are listening. I'm leaving it up to the children. And so and so some somebody, I heard one preacher say, whatever's cheapest, you go with that. <laughs> because guess what? I'm no longer there <laughs> anymore. And so, but guess what? So whether I'm buried in the ground and I, I, I don't, I want to inf- offend anybody. If I'm being worm food or if I'm being buried in ashes, guess what? God can find me wherever I'm at. And so guess what? So, so if I'm a, many times what they do with the, the sailors, when they would die on a the ship, they would cast them over the ship and they would become shark food. But guess what? God can find them. God can find them. Take them out of the shark's belly, put them all back together, and then give them a glorified body. So guess what? See, God can find you and me wherever we are. We don't have to worry about being in the right places because God can find me. And so, so whether I'm buried or whether I'm, I'm cremated or whatever, whatever is cheapest. And so whatever you want to do. And so, so many times, watch me now. I'm not saying we shouldn't honor the dead, but many times we go in debt trying to honor somebody when that's just their house. You know, the real them is already with God. See, guess what? So, so we're crying over them, but they're more alive than we are because, wow, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So God can find you and me wherever we are, but we saw, but we saw in his appearing. And so we, we saw that the scene in heaven, we saw this great, 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 uh, marriage, some of the lamb, how we're going to be celebrating, how we're going to be up there and spending the fellowship with God for seven years. But at the same time, God is going to be judging the earth. And that's why, guess what? That's why, what the reason that we study Bible prophecy, what is not that we will pick out dates and not that I will try to figure out when he's coming back, but that I, first of all, that I would be ready when he comes, that I'm looking to be raptured up because I don't want to miss the boat. As I, as I plan to put a period here, that I think I told you that there was once a there was once a pastor in the church, and he was giving the invitation. He said, "Whoever wants wants to go to heaven," he said, "Raise your hand." He said, "Raise your hand," and so. Everybody raised the hand, but with one little boy, he said, maybe he didn't hear me. So he said it again. You know how we have preached, we like to repeat ourselves. So he said it one more time. He said, anybody wants to go to heaven, he said, raise your hand. And a young fella still did not raise his hand. So after the church, so the pastor went to the young fella and said, why didn't you not raise your hand? Don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yes, sir. I want to go to heaven, but I thought you were loading up now. <laughs> And so, and so, so, but we see, but we see how we need to be ready to go with our king. We need to be ready to go with our savior. We need to be ready to go with him when he called. But understand this, wherever, I, I think I told you the story was once some people believed they called out a day when Jesus was coming and they sold their house, they sold their property, they sold their car, they bought all, they bought a bunch of tracks and they moved to Jerusalem. I don't know why they felt they had to be in Jerusalem, but they moved to Jerusalem and they saw all their possessions, and they, yet they believed that Jesus was coming. But guess what? That they came and went. And so guess what? So I don't have to be in Jerusalem. I don't have to be in the right place because God can find me wherever I am. And, and so he can gather me up. He can, I can be raptured up. But guess what? Even in the, with the tribulation saints, the, 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 the angel is going to gather them up. He's going to find them. And so let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for this time that we get to spend together with you, God. Father God, we thank you for how we allow us to open up our Bibles, God, how you allow us to study and research your word, God, how you allow us in all of our gettings, oh God, to get an understanding, God, how you give us an ear to hear just what the Spirit is saying unto the church, Father. But now, God, let us put some feet to our prayers, let's put some feet to our faith, and let's show this world just how you would have us to conduct ourselves so we can give you glory, because God, we long, long to hear those words. Well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you, and we all say, Amen.